By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have a nice aggro battle for you. We have Jonathan who's playing an Urnum Burnum deck, red and green. He is taking on Yost who's playing a mono green deck, so both decks are fast, they're aggressive, and this match is played in the X Points tournament. This is actually finals number 22 of X Points. Whoever wins this one will be the winner of X Points 22. Now, before I start with the deck decks and do a little bit of explanation about what X Points actually is, I would first like to point out that as always, you can also skip this section and go to, uh, straight to the matches. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games. If you click on MTG Games, it'll take you straight to the uh, uh, to the games, to the overview, and also you can find more information about the rules. For example, we're playing uh, today according to the X Points rules, and X Points means you're playing according to the Atlantic rule set, so that means there's Mana Burn, that means Fallen Empire is allowed, but on top of that, you have a points list. You can see that here on the screen, and X stands for 10, so you can spend a total of 10 points on cards with points allocated to them. So for example, if you decide to play a Library of Alexandria, you've already spent four points. Now, if you also wanna uh, play with a Soul Ring and play with the Black Lotus, that makes six points, six uh, plus four makes 10. So those are all your pointed cards. So then you can no longer play with, for example, a uh, Regrowth or a Maze of If or a Mistress Factory. So you have to really think about how you want to spend your uh, points when making these decks. Now, of course, uh, the goal of a list like this is to create a lot of diversity and diverse decks. Now, I think if you look in the X Points playlist that I actually have on my channel, you can see that the finals are very varied. You know, there is a lot of change into what kind of decks you find in the finals. They're all pretty like optimal lists, obviously, because they made it all the way to the finals, but it changed from, for example, a Ponza strategy to a Lantex strategy to um, a, a discard strategy. That, that's the final we had in, in Numbers 21. And today we have two aggro decks fighting each other for uh, the championship. So it's very diverse. And the nice thing about the list as well is that it changes over time. So it asks for input of the community and then the list can change. So you can see this list is up to date until January 14th. And after that, there will be a new list. Now, if this sounds interesting uh, to you and you wanna join this community, you can, it's completely free. I've got a link to their Facebook page down below and also a link to their YouTube uh, uh, page actually. So check out their YouTube page, check out their Facebook page if you're interested. And now I'm going to continue with the deck decks. I'm actually gonna start with the deck of the player at the top. He is on Urnum Burnham. Let's have a look at his list. And here we see the list of Yo. So this is an Urnum Burnham deck, right? And Urnum Burnham refers to Urnum Jin. It's the 4-5 powerhouse from Arabian Nights Forticast for a 4-5 creature that during the upkeep needs to give Forest Walk to a creature of the opponent. But this is a minor drawback if you look at what you get for it. I mean, a 4-5 for 4. And in old school, that 5 toughness really matters. It means you cannot play a Psionic Blast on it and kill it. You cannot play a Bolt on it. It's kind of tough to get rid of that, of that 5 toughness in old school also because there are a lot of 4-4 four, four creatures and of course a 4-4 four, four is going to lose against a 4-5. Now then there's of course the burn, in, burn part of the deck, so Urnum Burnum. We have 4 uh, Lightning Bolts, we have 4 Chain Lightnings, right? So that is pretty brutal. Um, and then we have a little bit of white splashed into this list and that is a little bit uncommon. You don't see that that often, of course. It's very tempting to splash white because in this case it gives you access to disenchants and disenchants can take care of artifacts or enchantments. It's one of the best commons in the game, basically. And I think he's playing with it specifically because it can take care of enchantments uh, because you have to, you can also play crumble because or shatter because you have access to red and green. But both those cards don't give you the option to also kill an enchantment. So just purely because of the flexibility of disenchant, he has decided to splash in white here to just be able to play those two cards. And of course, in the sideboard, he plays some sorts to plowshares and some more disenchant. So that's uh, that's quite interesting. Now, the rest of the deck is really what you would expect of an Urn and Burnham list. It just, it goes really quickly. We see Curd Ape, you know, Curd Ape, Taiga. It's, it's such an old fashioned combo, right? A Curd Ape gets plus one, plus two bonus when you have a forest while well, taiga is a forest and a mountain in one so if you do taiga curd ape go you've got a two three creature turn one and that is a big deal in old school 
Let me tell you that it's a big deal. And he's also playing with four Mistress Factories. Berserk, of course, being a really important card in lists like this. Berserk is a card that doubles the amount of power of a creature and also gives it trample. And the creature, if it's attacking, it's destroyed at the end of combat. So you can put your Berserk, for example, on your Curd Ape, making it a 4-3 Trampler, just dealing more damage. If you, before you do that, first put a Giant Grove on it, so you make the Curd Ape a 5-6, and attack with it, and then you put a Berserk on it, it's now a 10-6 Trampler. Can you imagine your opponent not having any blockers or just deciding not to block the Curd Ape, and then out of nowhere you put a Giant Grove on it and a Berserk on it, making it 10-6? You deal 10 tra damage, 10 Trample damage out of nowhere, you know, with your little Curd Ape. So that, that makes a difference, you know? Decks like this are tough to play against because on top of that very aggressive creature package you also have the burn so if you are able to deal like 10 points of damage with your creatures which is quite easy with a deck like this you can finish it with burn or i guess you want to deal 11 points of damage because then your opponent's on nine and you need like three bolts or two bolts in a chain or whatever you know so you can kind of finish it uh, what this deck doesn't have what most urn and burnham decks do play with is a, a fireball as a finisher and also this deck isn't playing with lana or elf so there's no mana ramp in this deck well, I'm saying no mana ramp. There are Moxen in this deck. Check that out. We've got three Moxen. And that's quite uh, special to see in X points because Moxen are pretty heavily taxed. So a lot of players prefer not to play with Moxen and just play with other pointed cards instead. So for example, we don't see a regrowth in this deck. That could have been an interesting option. But you can really see that Jonathan really went for the Mox plan. So he's playing with three Moxen. I believe they're two points each. So that's six points. And he's playing with four Mistress Factories. They're one point each. And then you've got your 10 points in total, right? So it, it's it's really interesting that he's going for the Moxen as ramp. It, it, it would be quite tempting to go with just Lanawar Elves here, also because they don't cost any points. But the fact that Jonathan made it all the way to the finals kind of says enough and says how powerful Moxen can be. We all know it's a powerful artifact, but in this format, is it worth two points? I guess the answer is yes, because he's made it to the finals here. Anyway, this is the list of Jonathan. Now let's take a, list, uh, a, a look at the list of his opponent, the mono green deck of Yoast. And here we see the mono green list of Yoast. And I'm, I'm liking mono green lists. I've got a soft spot for it. I have a nice white boarded mono green deck myself that I like to play every once in a while at tournaments or online events. I just think it's, 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 it's not as easy as you think it is. You really got to time right with these aggro decks and you know that you're going to win probably the game early on or you're going to lose, right? You're going to run out of resources. So it, it's always kind of a race that you're playing and in your mind, you have to decide, how am I going to time my cards? Again, this is a deck with Berserks. This is a deck with Giant Groves, just like Jonathan has those cards as well. So you've got to time, when am I going to use it? What I find interesting about this list, well, there are quite a few things, but the first thing I want to point out are the three Maces of If here in the list of Yoast. You may think a Maze of If is more a defensive card, but actually it's offense, right? Because you can attack with all your creatures, and then if your opponent, let's say, blocks your Wailuli Wolf on an Urnum, you can say, you know what, I'm going to use my maze, I'm going to take my Waluli Wolf out of combat, it's going to get untapped, it's not going to die, and I can use my Waluli Wolf to pump another creature, right? Because Waluli Wolf, you can tap it to give target creature plus one, plus one. So your maze of if, you can use it defensively, you know, it's, it's a good card, but offensively, in this deck, it's even better because you can keep attacking. It's also really good with Mishra's Factories. Let's say you attack with three Mishra's Factories and you've got a maze, if your opponent chooses to block one of them, you can use your mace on the one that's getting blocked, untap it, pump one of your other maces that's getting damaged through, right? Or maybe you want to uh, pump up the mace that's getting blocked so it can kill the creature that's getting blocked by, if you know what I mean. So Maze of If is super versatile. It's really good in this list. Um, the Wailuli Wolf I also really like in combination with Pendlehaven because Pendlehaven is a land from Legends, right? You can tap it to give target 1-1 one, one creature plus 1 plus 2, which is a pretty big deal. Let's take the Dragonfly that's in this deck. It's a 1-1 one, one flyer. You can give it first strike. It's 2 mana to cast. It may seem pretty weak, right? But when you use Pendlehaven on it, you can make it a 2-3 flyer with a potential first strike. Then you can use your Wailuli Wolf, making it a 3-4 flyer. Then you can use your Giant Grove, making it a... What where are we now? A 6-7 flyer. Then you can use your Berserk and you've got a 12-7 potential first strike trampler coming, you know, towards uh, Jonathan in this case. And then it's up to Jonathan to decide if he's got a bolt in hand, when is he going to use the bolt, <laughs> you know? So it, it's really going to be an interesting match to see how the players are going to, you know, use their Giant Groves, use their Berserks, time their Mazes of If, time their other removal. Uh, it, it, 
this this could be a really interesting matchup. And, and I have to say, um, when we look at tournament results, the mono green deck decks have done much better lately than the Urn and Burnham decks. And I'm just talking about tournaments in general, not specifically X points. Um, but when I'm looking at my own personal experience playing a mono green list against a green and red list, it, it has had really bad results for me. I, I find it really difficult to play against the burn. The Lightning Bolt is such a good card against these decks because Lightning Bolt can pretty much kill every creature of Yoast, right? And also a Lightning Bolt is a great response to a Giant Grove. You want a Giant Grove, your Bolt in response, creature is dead. And it's a two for one, right? So Lightning Bolt is so good and also just burn in general because the red green player will also be able to put early pressure on just like what Yoast wants to do. But then the red player can finish it with burn, which is something that's tough for Yoast. Talking about burn, he does have a card that can deal damage out of out of nowhere, basically. And that is the If Biff Afrid. So If Biff Afrid is in this deck, it's quite interesting because If Biff Afrid is a card, two green and two, a three, three flyer from Arabian Nights, and it's got a hurricane built into it. So you can pay one green, it deals one damage to every player and every creature with flying. And that, that ability can be activated by both players. So Jonathan can also pay green. So Jonathan can kill the If Biff Afrid. But again, it then deals damage to all the flying creatures and all the players. So if Biff Afrid is a great finisher, but super, super risky. Also because Jonathan is playing, or Yoast is playing with those beautiful three killer bees. I love to see killer bee. It was a chase card back in the day. You know, when I was young, everybody wanted to have killer bees. Uh, it's an 0-1 flyer and you can pump it for one green, give it plus one, plus one. You might, you might think, what's the big deal? But back then, green was the ramp color. So you always had a lot of green mana. And to have a place where you could pump all that mana in, was just fantastic. You could have a huge army of killer bees, you know, coming at your opponent. The card was deemed one of the better cards in the set legends. Can you imagine that? People really, 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 really wanted this card. Maybe it's hard to imagine now, but it was super wanted. Anyway, this is the deck of Yoast. We've looked at the deck of Jonathan. I think this match is going to be a blast. It could be over quite soon, but I'm hoping, of course, for three games and very, very close matches. There's only one way to find out, I guess. Let's go to the finals of X Points. 22. Game number one is about to begin. We've got Yoast. I believe he's on the play. He's playing Mono Green. There we go. Playing a Scavenger Folk. He's taking on Jonathan. He's playing a Red Green Urnum Burnham deck. So both players have pretty aggressive strategies. So Jonathan has access also to red cards. He splashes a little bit of white in the form of two disenchants. And Yoast is just strictly green. Let's see what he can do. There's a Taiga. Are we going to see a Curd Ape by Jonathan? That would be a classic opening. There's a Curd Ape, Taiga, Curd Ape, go. You know, this is now a 2-3 creature because it gets the bonus from the Taiga because it's also a forest. So this is really your 94 opening. This is your revised opening right here. Passing your turn here to Yoast. I'm expecting Yoast here also to cast more creatures. Okay, there's a Mace, so that's going to stop the Ape. Tapping the green, and there we see a Script Sprite. So that's pretty good for him. Script Sprite, of course, flies over the Curd Ape. So he can continue attacking. Four cards in hand there for Yost, and I believe that dice there for Jonathan indicates six. So six cards in hand for him, drawing card number seven. Both players being on 20. We can see the, uh, the phone of Jonathan there showing us the scores. So that's pretty helpful. And I'm expecting Jonathan here to just put more pressure on the board. Now, Jonathan is playing with uh, three Moxen. And I wonder when he's going to then play out a Mox because of that Scavenger Folk. He's looking at his Taiga. Is he going to tap the Taiga? Yes, he's going to tap the Taiga. <laughs> he's really taking his time here to tap the Taiga. A Chain Lightning. Okay, probably on, oh, on the Scavenger, yeah. Makes sense, I guess. Depends on what he has in hand. That's always what makes it difficult here. I'm trying to, you know, comment these matches, of course. There's a maze activation on the Curd Ape attack, but it, I don't know what's in the hands of these players. And, of course, what you do really depends on what you have in hand. For example, if Jonathan has an artifact in hand that he doesn't want to lose, and it makes absolute sense to play a Chain Lightning on the Scavenger Folk. There we go. So probably wanted to keep that Mox Ruby. Anyway, the Curd Ape should be untapped, by the way, because of that Maze activation. There's a Mox Ruby for Jonathan. 
I think Jost is now pointing it out that he can untap actually use Curt Ape. Anyway, there's a pass now. Yost drawing card number five. Let's see what he can do. There's a Mishra's Factory. That's also a pretty good blocker for the Curt Ape because it can pump itself. So there's the attack by Jonathan Wright. First damage dealt here. Actually, this is going slower than I expected because both players have such aggressive decks, but this is just the first point of damage. So Jonathan dropping to 19. Second, we see the Wailuli Wolf. So this is the 1-1. One, one. You can tap it to give target creature plus 1, plus 1. So starting next turn, Yost can actually use the Wolf to pump up the Script Sprites and deal some more damage to Jonathan. Jonathan doesn't have a lot of flyers in his deck, but of course he does have access to 4 Bolts and 4 Chain Lightnings. Okay, there is the Strip Mine, probably on the Maze, exactly. Now he can attack with the Ape, deal 2 points of damage to Yost. Or does he want to keep it on blocking duty? No, he doesn't. Just attacking, turning it sideways here. Probably going to put Yost on 18. I don't expect him to block here. Exactly. He's going to drop to 18. So six cards in hand for Jonathan and only three cards in hand for, uh, for Yost. So that could be an advantage for Jonathan in the long run. There's another creature here, Argovian Pixies. And Argovian Pixies is a great blocker for that... Uh, Mishra's Factory, because all damage dealt by artifact creatures is reduced to zero by the Argovian Pixie. So it's just a great card against Mishra's Factories, and that's the reason that a lot of uh, people actually play the Pixies. There's the attack through the air with the Script Sprites, and there's the pump dealing two points of damage. So Jonathan will drop to 16. Should be dropping to 16 here, not to 17. So let's hope that uh, that Yost can explain this to Jonathan. There's the untap. So he should be here on, let me make a note. He should be here actually on 16. And Jonathan now four cards in hand. He can actually attack here with the Argovian Pixies because of that protection from artifacts. There's the attack. Oh, he's attacking with both, kind of indicating to Yost here that he's got, look at that, he's activating his factor. So he's saying, you know what, if you've got a bolt, use it. There's the bolt. Are we going to see a giant growth? No giant growth here. That would have been quite fun if Yost had a giant growth in response. So he's going to take four points of damage. He's going to drop here to 14. Oh, he's playing a berserk on one of the creatures. That He's kind of using a berserk now as a removal. So the downside is he's going to get double damage. And the upside here is uh, that the creature is going to die. So that means six points of damage. And you can see that there, Yost dropping to 12. And I guess he's targeted the Curt Ape because the Curt Ape dies here in this exchange. But this is pretty good for Jonathan as well. I do understand the play here by Yost because you want to keep putting pressure on Jonathan. And with that Curt Ape and the, and the uh, Argovian Pixies, there was just too much pressure. Now there's a Mishra's Factory. So things are not looking great for Yost at the moment. That maze does change a lot here. They can kind of stop the bleeding. There's the attack again. So if he pumps it, he can put Jonathan here actually on 14. He's not pumping it though. And I believe Jonathan is still a point behind here, by the way. I don't know if it's relevant. We'll just have to wait and see. Anyway, three cards in hand for Jonathan. That maze really makes a difference here because I can protect Yost. For example, if Jonathan chooses to, you know, animate the factory and the pixies and attack, he can send probably the Pixies back, I guess, and, and block the factory with the Wolf. And remember, the Wolf can also pump itself, so it can make itself a 2-2. It says any creature plus 1 plus 1. So it can block before damage is dealt, pump itself, and that way kill the factory. So that wouldn't be a good exchange for Jonathan here. So 
I'm actually expecting Jonathan not to attack at all. Again, depends what he has in hand, of course. But based on the board states, I wouldn't attack. So he's got three cards in hand. Hasn't had a land drop yet. And of course, this is a final. So Jonathan is really taking his time trying to decide what to do. I mean, a maze can make things pretty complicated. And now they're looking up the rules for the Wailulu Wolf. And, and yes, the Wailulu Wolf can pump itself. It's a very useful card. There we see a Savannah tapping four. We're probably going to see an Urnum here. Exactly. There's the Urnum Jin. A 4-5 powerhouse. And a problem for Jonathan here is that Maze of If on the side of Yost. If he can take care of that Maze, that would be really be sweet for him. Because now, actually, that Urnum can... Well, not really work against. So remember, with Urnum, Jonathan has to give Force Walk to a creature of the opponent. He can simply choose the Pixies. Sorry, the Script Sprites, because he, he cannot block the Script Sprites anyway. There's the attack by Yost. There we see Jonathan dropping another point. And I mean, this is why I really like Ice Storm in, in these lists, because there are so many special lands. And, and yes, of course, then you got to make slots available for it, which is tough. But I mean, you've got Maze of If, you've got Mishra's Factories. Sometimes you've got Loa. And like in X points, you don't see Loa a lot because it costs so many points. But, um, you know, it's just really handy against all these special lands. Sometimes you play against these really greedy mana-based decks and, and it can win you the game as well. Here we see another Mishra's Factory. This is actually quite good for Jonathan. Like he's kind of building up the pressure here. And what he could do now is actually just attack with all his creatures because he can use his Mishra's Factory to pump the other Mishra's Factory. So it's no lo longer possible for Yost to make that Walulu Wolf Mishra's Factory exchange. So I would personally go aggro right now. Then again, that's what I would do, not knowing what else he's got in hand. Okay, there's a flyer. So the 1-1 one, one script sprites now on the side of Jonathan as well. So he can use that to block Yost's sprites. But remember, Yost has the wolf to pump it up. So we will just have to wait and see. I would be tempted to attack here. There's a Chain Lightning. Is it going to be on the White Lily Wolf? That would make the most sense, actually. Then I would definitely attack. And I believe the Mistress Factory on the side of Yost still has Summoning Sickness. So Jonathan's in a really good spot here right now. He can animate the factory. He can pump his own factory. I mean, this is really good. Just turn everything sideways, except, of course, the script sprites because it still has summoning sickness. But the Argovian Pixies, the Mishra's factory, and the Urnum Jin are going into the red zone. I'm expecting a mace here on the Urnum. Now, again, if Yost, for example, has a giant growth because Jonathan's pretty much tapped out, he could... Animate the factory, block the factory of Jonathan, put a giant growth on it, kill the factory of Jonathan. That is a line of play you could follow. Perhaps he's got another Berserk, he could kill one of the creatures. So there we see the maze activation, let's see on what creature, okay, on the Urnum, that makes sense. And is he now going to take 4 points of damage? That means he will drop to 7. It looks like he's taken the damage here, dropping to 7. That is starting to look very dangerous for Yost. Jonathan just has so much, um, so many threats on the board here. Yost having, I believe, two cards in hand. We don't see the dice of Jonathan anymore, so it's hard to tell how many cards he's got in hand. Probably also two. I think they were pretty close.
we're waiting here for for Yost. I guess he's having some struggles, perhaps, with changing the score. They're playing in Tolaria. Should be pretty easy. Okay, now he's pumping it up as well. Yeah, that makes sense to deal that one extra point of damage. So Yost actually dropping to seven here. This is a this is a painful turn for Yost. There's another forest for him. He's got to do something here. Tapping four. What are we going to see? The if bit for Freed. Okay. That is, again, it's a little bit risky. Because what Jonathan can do, he can also use the if bit, right? He can also pay green. So he can pay two green, deal two damage to everything, including the flyer. So it would kill his own pixies. But he would also kill the pixies of Yost. And it would deal two more points of damage to Yost. It would put him on five. And then he can also attack with all his creatures. And I guess Jonathan here is asking what the card actually does. So Yost here explaining. It's a 3-3 flyer from Arabian Nights. I discussed it in a deck tech as well. Two green and two to cast. And it's got a built-in hurricane mechanic. So you can pay one green to deal one damage to every creature with flying and every player. And the thing is, here's the catch. The opponent can do that as well. And Jonathan here, having access to two green mana, he can also activate the if for free. And... That is where it gets really dangerous for Yost here because Yost is a player who's got least um, less life, I should say. I won't say least life, but it's less life, of course. Anyway, he's on seven. There's another Taiga, so he can pay three. Actually kill the Flyer of Yost here, deal three points of damage to him as well that way. So he would drop to four and then just attack with everything. I think he then has the game. Let's see if Jonathan also sees that. Yost also being tapped out only has that Maze of If. So if Jonathan pays three green, looks like he first wants to go into the red zone. I mean, he can use it as, on instant speed, of course. And then he can use it before damage is dealt. Look at that. Yeah, I think he's got it. Paying three. So Yost is going to drop to four. Going to kill the Flyers. Also going to kill that script sprites on the side of Jonathan. And then he can animate. And he can win it. So use your ruby, for example, on your factory. And you can still pump it with the other factory. Remember, Yost is tapped out. Exactly. There we see. Activation. Turn it sideways and attack. That's it. Jonathan here winning the first game. Remember, it's only the first game. It's a best of three. Both players are going to dive into their sideboards. And we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two. Here we go. So Yost here on the play, of course, after losing that first game. Let's see what he can do. I believe both players are keeping their first seven. There's a Pendlehaven. That's good. Into a land or else. So Pendlehaven, the land from Legends, it can give plus one, plus two to a 1-1 one, one creature. So it can make that land or else a 2-3 next turn. So it's going to be interesting to see if Yost is going to just play more creatures out or if he's going to attack with the land or. Let's first see what Jonathan can do. Taiga again into Curdape, perhaps. Wow, again into Curdape. Again, that dream opener here for Jonathan. That's a 2-3 ape. That is tough for Yost. Again, he's got to deal with this big ape. There is a Mishra's Factory. That's pretty good. Of course, if Yost has a Giant Growth, we could just attack, hope, hoping for Jonathan to maybe block. So Yost putting his cards down here, five in hand. Does that mean that he's going to attack? I mean, he's playing with a lot of creatures, right? Exactly. He's playing another creature out the Argovian Pixies in a pass. I mean, the Curd Ape is really a problem for Jonathan because it's got the three toughness. It's a really good blocker, but it's also really good offensively. Because now Jonathan could just attack and deal two points of damage. The question is, does he want to? Because then he's opening himself up to more damage. Again, it depends on what he's got in hand. He's probably going to play out another land, perhaps play out another Curd Ape. That will be quite good. There's a Mishra's Factory on the side of Jonathan. There's the attack with the ape. Expecting Yost here to just take the damage. Maybe if he's got a Berserk, he wants to Berserk it. Kill it that way. Would mean he takes four damage instead of two. 
It looks like he doesn't. No, just gonna take the damage here. Drop to 18. Let's see what else Jonathan can do in his second main. Tapping two here. Playing an Argovian Pixies of his own. That does open it up a little bit for Yost. You know, for example, he could attack with the Lunarur because he can make a 2-3 with the Pendlehaven. So that would make it an unfavorable block for Jonathan. Then he could deal two points of damage that way. But yeah, do you really want to do that? So Yost here playing another factory. That's good. Remember, factories can pump each other. And themselves, actually. There we see... Oh, no attack. No, he's going to cast more. Going to play a Wailuli Wolf. So there's the wolf again, the creature that can give plus one, plus one to any other creature, including uh, himself. There's the attack for two. I like this. Quite aggressive. Offering to trade for Jonathan. And I guess he's offering to trade because he knows what a good blocker it is for the uh, Mishra's factories on the side of Yost there. And Jonathan taking the damage, so he's also dropping to 18, passing the turn here. And what's nice about these matchups, by the way, matchups, by the way, is that it's very combat heavy, which I really enjoy. I think combat is a really nice part of, of magic, which sometimes you don't see that often anymore. Because of all the removal and all the, you know, spells are usually better than creatures and that kind of stuff. There we see a Pendlehaven on the side of Jonathan. For Jonathan, it's not that useful, though, because he doesn't have a 1-1 one -one on the board, but at least it's a land drop. It gives you a green mana. Some uh, flickering on the screen on the side of Jonathan. Let's see what he uh, is going to do here. Would be nice if he could stop the flickering, by the way. Anyway, he's um, animating the factory with the Pendlehaven, attacking with all three. Probably has a bolt in hand. And the flickering has stopped. That's good. Anyway, attacking here. So he's got a 2-2 two -two Mercer's Factory, a 2-3 Curt Ape, and a 2-1 Argovian Pixies. There we see an animate by Yost. So he's animating the factory here. In response, we see a bolt probably on the factory. So is Yost going to take the damage here? Still is the wolf to potentially block, but I believe... Yeah, so he's blocking the wolf on the Argovian Pixies, taking the trade here, taking four points of damage, dropping to 14. And again, this is what I talked about in the deck deck, just the fact that the red player has access to Lightning Bolts, for me, makes him a favorite, because Bolt is so good in this matchup. So Yost here, three cards in hand. Swinging in for two, it seems. So choosing to keep the Mishra's Factory at bay because the Factory is such a great blocker against the Curd Ape. You know, if he blocks with the Curd Ape, he can simply block itself up to, uh, pump itself up to a 3-3, which makes it an ideal blocker for the Curd Ape. So Jonathan, ooh, that factory changes a lot though because now Jonathan can pump his factory to a 3-3. So he could attack here, kind of offering a factory trade to Yost. If he just attacks with the single factory, that's probably what I would do here. Although it's risky because Yost has mana open, maybe he's got a giant growth in hand. It looks like there's the animation with the Pendlehaven. Changing his mind, though, untapping the Pendlehaven again. There's always risk involved here, because, I mean, you know that both players are playing with Giant Grove, so... And then the question is, are you going to take the risk? Again, in this case, both players haven't played out a single Giant Grove yet. We have seen, of course, one Lightning Bolt from Jonathan. I mean, that's definitely something for Yost to keep track of, right? How many Bolts have been played out? And Chain Lightning, also a good card in this match, but not as good because it's Sorcery Speed, so you cannot use it during combat. Anyway, here we see the attack. Jonathan being quite aggressive here, putting the Curd Ape sideways as well. So a 2-2 Factory and a 2-3 Curd Ape. Factory can be pumped by his other Factory, making it a 3-3.
There's the animation by Yo. So now he also has a 2 2 effect. He probably wants to use it to block the ape, bumping it to a 3 3. So blocks are now declared. So that's always hard because we cannot hear the players. Bumping up the Lanawar Elves here. So Lanawar Elves is now a 2 3. There's the bolt. In response, there's the giant growth. And this, this makes a difference, right? So now the Mistress Factory is a 5-5. Five five. It's blocking the Kurt Ape, it seems. Or was it blocking the Factory? So he used the Lanawar Elves to block the Kurt Ape. They're both 2-3, so it's not going to die. It looks like he used the Factory to block the other Factory. And he put a Giant Grove on it, making it a 5-5, five five, killing the Factory on the side of Jonathan. If I'm right, though... Again, I don't hear the player, so I don't know how they've declared blockers. We'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, I think that's the way he did it. It's going to pump himself as well, making it a 6-6 six, six here. So it doesn't really matter for Jonathan. He, I mean, he can pump his factory to a 3-3, three, three, but that makes no difference. It's still going to die. Okay, so he is blocking it, though. So in that case... This is an interesting situation because I believe Yost played the Giant Grove on the... Oh, of course, because then I also got three points of damage from, um, from the Bolt. Yeah, so it takes six in total. Sorry. I made a little mistake there. So what happened here is there was a Lightning Bolt from Jonathan on the Mishra's Factory of Yost. In response, Yost played the Giant Grove, making it a 5-5. So it took three damage from the Bolt. Then Jonathan made his factory a 3-3, dealing 6 damage in total to the factory of Yost. So Yost made his factory, pumped his factory up as well. So then it's 6, so it dies exactly. There's the attack by the Argovian Pixies here to Jonathan. Jonathan taking 2 more points of damage, dropping to 14. Both players on 14 here. So it's pretty exciting here, right? Both players on 14. And remember, Jonathan is up a game. I'm hoping for game number three, of course. So I'm rooting for Yost here. There we see a plateau. Remember, Jonathan is playing with two disenchants main. Perhaps after sideboarding, he's also playing with swords to plowshares. There is a script sprites here. Of course, he's got to tap another land for that. Yeah, because plateau makes white mana and red mana. Anyway, script sprites on the board now. And that makes his Pendlehaven a lot better, right? Because Pendlehaven, remember, it can give target 1-1 one, one creature plus 1 plus 2. So he can start attacking with the sprites next turn, making it a 2-3. Yost having no flying blockers at the moment. Is Jonathan going to attack here? That's the question. No, he's not. So I guess that's showing Yost that he doesn't have a bolt or growth, giant growth in hand. Two cards, I believe, for Jonathan. There's a Forest by Yost, tapping two. There's the Emerald Dragonfly. Emerald Dragonfly, a 1-1 one, one flyer, so that can block that script sprites. And remember, Yost also has the Pendlehaven, so he can also make his Dragonfly a 2-3. And for two green, he can give it first strike. But that first strike ability is not relevant yet. I mean, it could be in some kind of Giant Grove scenario. Let's wait what Jonathan can do here. So both players now having a 1-1 one, one flyer and both players having that Pendlehaven. And Jonathan really being in the tank here. And it makes sense because it's tough with all the combat. You know, you got to think one, one wrong decision. You know, once you've turned that creature sideways, one combat that goes sour, it could cost you the game. There's the block by Yost. There's the pump. There's the pump. Okay, so two, two, three creatures bouncing off each other. 
This is actually not great for Jonathan, unless he's got a combat trait now. And he does. Okay, there's the giant growth. So it's going to kill the Emerald Dragonfly, unless Yost also has a giant growth. He was looking at that one card in hand. But he's going to lose the Dragonfly here. And I guess for Jonathan, this is a nice exchange because it means that he now has air dominance with his script sprites. But also for Yost, it's not too bad because, you know, Jonathan also lost the Giant Grove, which is a really good card in these matchups. Playing a Mishra's Factory here. And passing the turn. Factory, of course, cannot do too much because Jonathan also has the Factory. And Factory is slightly better as a blocker because it can block and then pump itself, making it a 3 3. And when you attack, you cannot. Um, you know, use that pump ability because, of course, you, you have to tap your factory to attack. Anyway, we see a Mox Emerald here being played by Jonathan. The Moxen actually haven't played a big role thus far in the game. Jonathan having three Moxen in his deck. There's the attack with the 1-1. One, one. Pumping, pumping it up 2-2-3. Two to two, three. Yost dropping to 12 here. And there's an Argovian Pixie, so more pressure on the board here. And it's important, yeah, Yost finding a land from the top of his deck, that's not great. If Yost can find, for example, a Killer Beast, that would be really nice with all the green mana. He's got five lands that can produce green mana and the Lanawer Elves. He's playing three Killer Bees main. I am slightly rooting for Yost here because I want to see a game three. These are very close matches. Anyway, there's the pump again. Oh, this is not looking good for uh, for Yost. Tapping three, four. Are we going to see an Urnum? There, we're going to see the Urnum Jin four, five powerhouse. That's more problems for Yost here. Yost here drawing his second card. He needs something good. Okay, Maze. That is actually pretty decent. It's going to be interesting to see what Jonathan is going to do next. Is he going to attack with the Urnum? And the Urnum actually, now he's got to give Force Walk to one of the creatures of Yost. Yeah, Yost pointing that out. It would probably pick... It doesn't actually matter. You could pick the Lanawer, but he can pump the Lanawer. Okay, he's picking the Lanawer Elves. He could also pick the Argovian Pixies. It's hard. Ooh, this is a good strip mine. Taking care of the mace. Is he now going to attack... With the Urnum, that would be really tough. Then, of course, Yost could double block if he wants to. He could double block on the Factory pump itself. So Factory and the Lanawer Elves. He could make the Lanawers 2-3, the Factory 3-3, three, three, making it a pretty good block, actually. I think if I'm Jonathan, I would still do it, though. Because then you can kill another blocker on the side of Yost, and then next turn you can put all your creatures sideways and put pressure on. So it may seem like a, a, a bad situation, trading an Urnum, for example, for a Mistress Factory, but I think it, in this case it's good. And he's attacking with everything here, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, that is, that is pretty aggressive. I didn't expect that much aggression here. I mean, for example, Yost could do Lanawer Elves on the argovian pixies making it a 2-3 killing it and then he can do mishra's factory on the ape killing it oh he's not gonna make it though he's gonna die oh man that is unfortunate joe's dying here it's too bad that jonathan winning here it's too bad yeah putting in the results it's on to larry it's too bad that we cannot really hear the players and how they were blocking um, but looking looking at this situation, I think that um, the way that Yost blocked, he probably wasn't blocking the Urnum, taking the damage from the Urnum, and then also taking it from the sprites. He would go on six. And then he would be on one though. He would be on one, but maybe he decided to go uh, to go low enough. Maybe he didn't even block the Kurt Ape here. Anyway, uh, Jonathan uh, winning uh, this game. Congratulations, Jonathan. Making it 2-0 here, and um, I guess I guess I was right with what I said, that I feel that when you're playing mono green against red green, I do find red having that advantage of having access to the bolts, in this case also having that chain lightning to finish the game. You know, direct damage is just so good, especially when you're playing against mono green, because every creature is almost boltable, right? 
and, 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 and that makes it very vulnerable. But I think when you take like mono green, and it also depends on the rule set, right? When you take mono green to like a Swedish tournament, for some reason they seem to do really, really well. You know, um, I'm not sure about, well, on X points, they also do really well because you do see them in top eights and in finals from now, now and then again. Um, I guess it's just a bad matchup for the mono green player. And of course, it's all about the luck of the draw as well, right? Especially when it's so close and there's so much combat involved. When are you going to find that berserk? When are you going to, you know, one berserk, giant growth berserk combination can change. You can win the game out of nowhere with mono green, which is one of the reasons why I like it. But again, I feel like the red green deck has that same advantage and that same explosiveness. But on top of that, they also have access to, to the red burn. Anyway, here we see the winning list. Congratulations, Jonathan, for winning X Points 22. As always, a big thank you to Yoast and Jonathan for showing their skills here on the channel, and also to Yoast for recording this match. Thank you, Yoast. And a shout out to Luki, AKA Louis, the organizer of X Points, for doing all of this. Now, if you want to be a part of the X Points family, check out the description below because there you can find a link to their Facebook page. You can join for free, you can join the tournaments for free. So, you know, check them out, have a look. It's a very open and social community. At least that is my experience. Um, and before you go, I would first like to thank you for watching another episode right here on Tippy Talks. But I would also like to ask you to like this video, share this on your social socials if you want, of course, and leave a comment. All these things are free and they really help Tippy Talks move forward. And talking about moving forward, you can also decide to become a patron of the show. And the cool thing is you can then support my channel financially so you can help me to continue making old school magic content. So if you like the content on my channel, please consider becoming a patron. And of course, there are also some perks when you become a patron. Your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of this video, including this one. And also you will get access to the Timmy Talks Discord, which is only for channel members and patrons. And you get access to the special tournaments that I organize for my patrons and channel members. So, you know, if that sounds nice, Join the club. It already starts with $1 a month. So have a look on patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. And now we are going to continue with the end scroll and take a look at our fantastic, amazing, wunderbar channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. Here we go. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Somebody can see.